Raise your hand if you grew up believing in the legend of Santa Claus. Perfect, thank you. Well, what if I told you that Santa Claus is actually a drug dealer? Well, the legend of Santa Claus comes from Siberian shaman healers who delivered psychedelic mushrooms into people's homes on the winter solstice. These mushrooms, shown right here, are called fly agar. They're colored red and white, and they induce feelings of euphoria and flight, and they're highly toxic. Reindeer eat them too. Now, like I said, they're delivered on the winter solstice, but they had to be delivered through people's chimneys due to the snow-bearing climates. They grow underneath trees and are hung on the branches to dry. Coincidence? I think not. Good afternoon, my name is Eden Thomas, and mushrooms, specifically the psychedelic kind, are used to heal and dissolve the ego. They're grown naturally worldwide and used by people of varying educations, intentions, and ages. I have done extensive research on the topic. And I've come to find out that they have a rich spiritual and medical history. So spiritually, there are rituals and ceremonies in South America, Africa, and Scandinavia, to name a few, where people take these magic mushrooms in order to connect with their higher power, connect with their religion, and also as a rite of passage. So it's a little bit blurry, but here are some mushroom-like carvings that were carved in South America around 4000 BC. And this basically just demonstrates their aesthetic value in their culture. So now I would like to explain something to you guys called the Stone Ape Hypothesis. And this basically states that before we were Homo erectus, there were apes wandering around their environment and like they came upon these magic mushrooms. Now sometime around 200,000 years ago, apes' brain size doubled. Uh, consciousness expanded and cognitive and visual functions improved, therefore leading to the development of language. And now the question is, were these psychedelic mushrooms responsible for speeding up this process? Well, I have a video to illustrate this idea for you. experiences having sustained personal meaning and significance. So at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, how did these magic mushrooms make their way to America? Well, in 1955, a man named Gordon Wasson took a trip down to Mexico, and he met a medicine woman named Maria Sabina, and she gave him a dose of these mushrooms. She took him through the entire ceremonial process, and he thought, yeah, I'm going to bring these back to my buddies in America. So. Here's a photo of Maria Sabina. She's a huge cultural presence in Mexico. Um, so anyway, he brought them back to America and the word spread like wildfire. And this is what induced the 1960s hippie culture of America. Pretty groovy, right? So once these psychedelic mushrooms were introduced into America, there was extensive medical research on how they could be used for mental health. And from around 1960 when they came here until now, well, undercover now because they're illegal, um, it's been proven that psychedelic mushrooms are used to cure anxiety, depression, OCD, and even addiction. Timothy Leary, a Harvard psychologist stated, I learned more about the brain and psychology in the five hours after taking these mushrooms than in the preceding 15 years of studying and researching psychology. I got this from an article called Leary, Life and Experiments, written in 2020 by Pearl Burke. 
So although these mushrooms are banned, they remain a prevalent alternative medicine worldwide today due to their healing properties. That just can't be denied. Now, in a TED talk in 2015 by Griffiths called The Science of Psilocybin and its Use to Relieve Suffering, he stated, after a single dose of psilocybin relieved depression in cancer patients for up to six months, the researcher of that experiment said, mushrooms produce substantial antidepressant and anxiolytic effects. It is unprecedented in the field of psychiatry. Overall, magic mushrooms have great potential in our culture. There's just so much we don't know or see until they're legalized once again. They were significant long ago and today for healing the soul spiritually and medicinally. A psychonaut is defined as one who dives into their psyche to explore altered states of consciousness. If you had a chance to deeply get to know yourself more than you ever have before in the span of one day, would you take it? I don't have another slide, but thank you. <laughs>